Just a couple of painkillers because yesterday I got my booster shot. Let's hope I can finish the video today. What's up crazy? I hope you're all doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes, welcome back to my channel. And today we're turning to the Air Like series for photo. So in this series, what we do is break down and analyze certain looks from famous photographers or famous creators and try to replicate their color grading and their editing in post edition. So the purposes of this is for us to understand the post editing process and in particular the software, which is Lightroom. And the profile that we're gonna break down today is Jungle Preset. Now this one was a suggestion by one of you down in the comment sections in my Spanish channel. So if you have any suggestions for this video or this series or anything in general, just put it down in the comment sections down below and I'll check them out. Okay, so how does this work? First of all, we're gonna jump into Instagram, check out the style, see all the things that we need to take into account in order to create the style. Then in Lightroom, we're gonna edit a photo, create a preset out of it, and then edit some photos to see how it performs and if we need to modify it. So before we jump into Instagram to start breaking down the style, I have to tell you that if you want to skip this tutorial, these presets that we're going to create in this tutorial, we're going to create four today, I think, are going to be added into the Edit Like preset pack, desktop and mobile versions, which will be linked down below, but also into the new Edit Like LUT pack. So I'm going to create the LUT optimized version of this preset so you can apply this look or these looks into video as well. So if you want to check it out and support me and ensure I don't starve to death, you can check it out in the description and also in the pinned comment down below. So having said that, let's jump into Instagram and start breaking down Jungle Presets style. So this is Jungle Presets on Instagram. If you want to check it out, just Jungle Presets, just like that. And obviously, as the name suggests, they sell their presets and they create them. So here's their shop. And immediately we can see that they have a lot of packs, but they have a lot of similarities to it, guys. So I just want you to pause for a second the video right now. Here we have these eight covers of preset packs and just take a look at the similarities and the differences between each types of photos. Okay, so I hope you did pause the video. So looking at all these images or all these preset packs, which are dedicated to different scenarios or different types of photography. For example, we have all these that are dedicated for maybe product photography or lifestyle photography. Then we have these ones for travel photography in tropical places, these in more cold places, and these retro films are more light to look. All of them are created for different scenarios. But in essence, they have a lot of similarities. Why? Because it's maybe the same person or the same group of people creating these presets. So it, the same thing occurs when I upload images to my Instagram feed, where maybe sometimes there are photos taken at sunset, sometimes they're in a very sunny day, sometimes they're very colorful, but it, they all look a bit different, different scenarios, different ways of, that I took the photos. But in essence, the edit is always similar to the other. Why? Because it's me editing. It's just my aesthetic that is passing into my edit and therefore into my photo. So in essence, every single picture in my feed has a bit of me. Uh, that's why they kind of work together. The same thing occurs right now. All the images are from different scenarios. For example, in the beach, this one could be Croatia, I think. Uh, these ones in New York, these ones in a valley maybe. But all of them, they kind of look similar because one person or a couple of persons are creating these presets so therefore they're very alike now the constants that I see in all these images or all these color photos first of all is the high contrast we have very nice contrast in all of the packs with the exception of the retro I'm going to talk about that in, in, in a bit but in essence we see that very nice contrast what I mean by that is that we have pure white for example we have very bright parts of the image in all of the packs in some places when most of them we have pure whites and also we have pure blacks now the blacks, as we can see, they're very black and in the shadows, we're losing a lot of information. For example, right here in these couple, these nearly welded couple, we can see that, well, basically we can't see the difference between the trouser and the blazer of the broom because we're losing a lot of information in the shadows. And then also in the highlights, we're bringing down a lot of the highlights. So we have a lot more information in the skies. So what these constants are telling me is that the tone curve has a very nice contrast to it. They have the blacks nailed down, they don't move them, the whites also pinned down. And then what they're doing is pulling down the highlights and pulling down the shadows so we lose a lot of information. And therefore we have a kind of a U-shaped tone curve. Now I'm gonna talk about this when we're editing the photo, but that's one constant that I see. Now the other constant that I see is the warmish tones. Basically we can see those warmish tones in the skin everywhere, even so that they're a bit unnatural, a bit too yellow and orangey. And therefore, 
this is done in camera calibration. So this is a basis of the style. Now, another thing that I can notice, which is a basis, if we jump back into the Instagram, if we just scroll down, we can see how warm the images are. That's because in color grading, they are, they're they adding colors into the shadows and to the mid-tones, a bit of warmish tones, so they look a bit more brownish. So those are the constants that I see throughout the feed, and that's basically uh, the basis of all their styles. Now, all these things that I've just listed are the similarities between all the photos that I can observe, and all of them, we're gonna compound them into one base preset, which will serve as an anchor point so we can create different variants of the style. First of all, the one that Juan Roy is asking for us to edit is the one that we can see over here, which is the retro film look. And in this one, it's basically the same preset, the base preset, but with reducing the contrast. Now that we can do it easily in the tone curve, therefore the whites are not pure whites anymore and the blacks are not pure whites, they're more faded out. So this is a very simple edit. And then what they do is go ahead and add some green cast to it or some orange cast, very similar to the tints that some analog film has. For example, sometimes we have these green casts over our image and sometimes we have more warmish tones like this one or very greenish cast. All depends on the film that you're using to take your photo. So this is one preset that we're gonna create from the base presets, so just a little tweaks to create this other one. Now, as we scroll down, we can see those constants there are repeating itself. Basically, we have all those warmish tones, we have that nice contrast, and overall, when we're talking about skin tones, we can see those warmish, yellowish, orangey skin tones. And the skin tones, they have this orangey vibe to it, and very orange, it looks like they have jaundice, but then, just look closely at their lips. The lips are the same color, they're basically a darker shade of the orange of the skin. What this is telling me is that in camera collaboration, they're making a homologated palette. What they're doing is all the warmish tones will be from purples and magentas all the way down to the yellows. They're tending them all the way to the oranges. Now this one, you can do it in camera calibration. We already talked about that in the video from the week before, where we go down into camera calibration and learn how to create color palettes and how to work with color contrast. I'll link it up here in the cards in case you want to check it out. But that's the thing they have in all their photos. They have this orangey vibe to the skin tones. Then we keep scrolling down and the style is basically the same. Then we have some cleaner styles like this one with no film grain for product photography or lifestyle photography. Then we have these ones which are darker images. And again, we can see that lots of information in the shadows, that very nice contrast. And in this case, those warmish tones really start to pop up of the wood in this case. Again, no information in the shadows. We can't even see where this man ends and where the staircase starts. And basically this is the same, the base preset. So by scrolling down, we can continue to look at the style, how it changes depending on the scenario, how they create different presets for each type of photography or each type of location. But in essence, it's the same edit. So the purpose of this tutorial, what we're gonna do is create a base preset and I'm gonna show you how you can create variations on that preset so you can apply the same look to different scenarios. So just gonna pick a couple of styles over here. For example, we have this one down here, which is very dramatic. I've clicked on an image. This one, they call it the tropical, which doesn't have a lot of tropical for me because the greens are very emerald and they're very desaturated. So this is basically the base preset, but then what they do is go to HSL and the greens and yellows, they take them towards the emeralds and then they, they desaturate them completely and resulting in these types of images which are very impactful, but we can see the basis of the style there. We can see those warmish tones in the shadows and in the mid-tones, not in the highlights, that's why the water does not have any warmish tones. And then the greens are completely desaturated and turning towards the emerald. So this is one preset or the one variation that we're gonna create apart from the retro look. Then by scrolling down, there's one that's very representative of their feed, which is this one that we're looking at and they call it the minimal brown. Now by clicking on it, you can see that it's basically the same. We have that nice contrast, highlights them down, then shadows losing some information and pure blacks on our image. And then in the greens, they're doing the direct opposite of the tropical preset. In this one, instead of going towards the emeralds with the greens and yellows, they're going towards a more vibrant and more warmish tones. So this is just a variation on the base preset to make it work for warmer environments or to make it look as as if the images are in more warmish environments. For example, in this image, you can see how it's very warm and it shouldn't be. We're in a very cold environment, we can see by the clothing of the model, but also the vegetation. These are pines, guys. Pines are normally towards the coldish greens, more emerald-like, not towards the more yellowish and vibrant. And this is just changed in HSL. Once again, no blues in the sky, no blues in the haze. In the mountains, normally we could see some bluish tones in the haze. So that's a little indication to what we have to do in each cell. And then all the greens are very burnt out, very yellowish. Uh, so that's the thing we have to remember to create this variation on the preset. 
Okay, so I think that's enough for the breakdown and the analysis. Now we're gonna jump into Lightroom and create the base preset first of all. In this one, we want to achieve that very nice contrast that we see in all of their images, those shadows that lose a bit of information. Then we want those blues desaturated, those warmish tones in the shadows and in the mid-tones added, we're gonna do that in the color grading part. And then we want those orangey skin tones and orangey palette in all the warmish tones, and that's done in camera calibration. Once we've done the base preset, then we create the variations. And first of all, we're gonna create the film look, which is a more faded out look with a greenish cast over all the image. Then we're gonna create the tropical, which is using the greens, turning them into towards the emeralds and desaturate them. And then we're gonna create the minimal brown, which is the opposite, bringing the greens all the way to the yellows and adding a bit of saturation. So in this manner, I'm gonna show you how to create a base preset and to create little variants from the base preset. So they still work together, but they're applicable to different scenarios. Having said that, let's jump into Lightroom. Okay guys, once in Lightroom we have all these images, notice that in all of them there are greens because greens is a very important part of the presets that we're gonna create. And let's start off by editing this one. I'm gonna go to the develop tab. Okay, now let's jump into the edit of the base preset. First of all, remember that white balancing, exposure and contrast, I don't like to move them, I like to leave them at zero and leave them out of the preset. So these are the values that we're gonna alter to adapt the preset to different lighting scenarios. So just leave them at zero. So we're gonna go all the way down to the tone curve first of all. Now here, what we want to create is a point in the shadows and a point in the highlight. Just a little pause here. If you don't know how the tone curve works, you can check out my video up here explaining every single detail of the tone curve so you can really master this tool. In this one, I'm just gonna show you how to create this style. So I'm gonna pull down the shadows. Remember that we want to lose some information in the shadows just below the diagonal. And the highlights, we also want to bring them down. Something like that. Now the blacks, we don't want to move them up. We don't want them faded out. We want them to be pure black, just like that. And the whites, we don't want to pull them down. We want pure whites as well. Okay, so now we have that very nice contrast on our image. After that, I'm just gonna tweak a bit of the settings over here. For example, the highlights, I'm just gonna pull them down towards the negatives. The shadows, I'm gonna pull them up just a bit. And then the blacks, I'm just gonna pull them down so we have very nice blacks on our image. Then in princess, I'm not gonna tamper too much with it. I'm just gonna add a bit of clarity. Now clarity, what it does, it adds some contrast into little details on the image. So this works perfectly for product photography or lifestyle photography, where the shiny parts of certain things or certain elements or metallic elements, for example, really start to pop up. We can see right now in the clock, how we add more clarity how it really starts to stand out a lot more. So we don't want to go the way to extreme, just a 14% is gonna be enough, just to add a bit more punch into the overall image. Then we're gonna skip HSL for the time being. Let's add those warmish tones into the shadows and into the mid tones. We're gonna to do that in the color grading part. Now I already made a tutorial dedicated to color grading. So if you wanna check it out, link up here in the cards so you can dominate this tool as well. First of all, what we want to do is add those warmish tones into the shadows and into the mid tones. So by moving this point around, we can change the hue we can also insert the value of the precise value over here or maybe just pull around uh, from left to right while clicking down in the hue to change uh, the spectrum so what i want to do is go all the way to the warmish tones maybe towards a more orangey something like that and then the saturation we can also move the values over here or we can select the middle point and by clicking shift we can ensure that the tone doesn't move and just add a bit of saturation. Now, I normally don't like to go to the extreme with the saturation over here because color grading will depend on the exposure on the image. Let's say that we add 100% of saturation to the shadows. In this image, not all the image is covered by the saturation that we added. We can see that some parts over here, which are not considered shadows, don't have that orangey cast that we added. But let's say we shoot an image which is at night or at blue hour, where Lightroom is gonna read the entire image as shadows. Therefore, every part of the image is gonna be color graded, completely color graded with the tone that we're adding. So that's why I like to leave the saturation around the seven to 15% max in the color grading part on each wheel. So having said that, I'm just gonna add a saturation around the 7%, which is very minimal, but it's there, guys. Then the midtones, I'm gonna add maybe a reddish tone to combine with this oranges to create that brownish feel to the image. So I'm just gonna add the hue. I'm gonna go with a hue of 25% just in the middle of the reds and the oranges. And then the saturation just go maybe around the nine or 10%. Now if we click this button on off, we can see that the change is very minimal, but it's there. We can see clearly how the image is a bit more warm in the shadows. And that's basically what we're looking for. Next up, we're gonna go all the way down to camera calibration and create those orangey skin tones. Now camera calibration is for me the most powerful tool for color grading. 
and you need to really master this one. So I made a video about this one the week before this video. It's up here in the cards in case you wanna check it out. It's a very complex tool, so I highly recommend you to check out that video and really understand how it works. So first of all, we want to achieve those orangey skin tones. Now for that, I'm gonna pull down the blue primary. Remember to pulling down the blue primary, we're affecting also the oranges. So let's say we go all the way down to the negatives. You can see how a lot of oranges started creeping into the image and the skin is a bit too orange for my taste. So I'm gonna go less with a value around maybe the minus 37, maybe minus 35, which is not to the extreme. And then I'm gonna combine it with some yellows from the red primary. So as you can see, if we go to the positives, of the red primary of the hue, we're adding a lot more yellows into the image. Now, the skins are very yellowish right now. We want them to more towards the orange. So I'm gonna pull it down, just draw it back, maybe to a plus 20. Now, what we're doing is combining the yellows that we're adding over here with the oranges that we're adding in the blue primary, so we have more orangey skin tones. Now, as a result, we can see now that the skins originally had a lot of purples, a lot of magentas, a lot of yellowish, and now, they're more uniform, there's a lot more orange going on and less magentas, less variation on the skin, which is what we're going for. Remember the lips of the model, which were basically orange as well as the skin. So that's a homologation on the warm colors on our color wheel. So maybe further along, we'll need to update the preset if we apply the settings to other images. First of all, these are the tentative uh, initial values. Maybe further along, we'll have to update it. So just gonna go up all the way down to HSL and here we're gonna click on the saturation and remember I didn't see any magentas or purples in the images and the blues were very desaturated almost towards the minus 90s and also the aquas uh, these values we're going to see them in the sky in particular okay the values are basically something like that now this is the base preset we can see the before and after with Y on our keyboard and immediately we can see how the image is a lot more contrasty which was something that we were, look we were looking for the shadows are losing some information and then we have those vibrant orangey skin tones and that warmish tone in the overall image so this is what we were going for now let's save this base preset so we can create the variations and see how this one applies in different scenarios so I'm gonna go to the left palette over here hit the plus sign create preset and remember that I don't want to add white balance exposure and contrast to the image also lens corrections and transform we don't want to check those and just hit create okay now we have this image when i was climbing a volcano with my friend kevin now we can see that the preset i've already added into the like preset pack i have here jungle preset base click it and with wine and keyboard we can see what we've done immediately we see how the oranges and the warmish tones really start to pop up they're a bit more vibrant and then in, well basically all the blues which were in the haze they're gone that's something that we were looking for and the image is a lot more warm so let's see in another image if we need to tweak some other stuff how about this one with my wrinkled shirt i don't really care but let's apply the preset see how it performs with the overall exposure that we have over here and the greens in the background i'm very curious so let's apply the base preset jungle preset and now we can see that the image is a bit dark because we added that nice contrast over here so i'm just gonna adjust the exposure just a bit just pull down a bit of the contrast and then we have this very nice image now we can see that we have pure whites that was what we were looking for we have pure blacks we're losing a lot of information in the shadow something that we were looking for and look at the skin this is what i was looking for yellowish or orangey skin tone which really makes it very tan very nice it's basically the style that they have it looks like i have jaundice but it's the style that they have and it's a very orangey style very tropical it's quite nice actually then in the shadows Immediately, I don't know if you can see this on YouTube, but I can see that these are pure blacks. And then over here we have more warmish blacks. That's what we did in color grading. So I think it's looking quite nice. Let's move on to create the variants of the style. Okay, back to the first image that we edit. As you can see, I have the settings for the base preset. Now let's create the tropical style. Now the tropical style is basically just desaturating and turning the greens all the way to the emerald. So for that, we're gonna go all the way down to HSL and first of all, we're gonna desaturate the greens, take them towards uh, the 75s or something like that in the negative side. And then the hue, gonna turn it towards the emeralds and the yellows all the way to the emeralds as well. Remember that a lot of the greens are in the yellow realm and immediately now we can see how the greens are very moody. This is what we were going for. Maybe the saturation was a bit too much. Maybe just return it just a bit, something like that. So they're not completely gone. And let's save it and see how it performs on different scenarios. So to save it, once again, you're gonna create a preset over here and just save it once again with the new name. For example, we have this image of myself in a very tropical environment in Masunte, Mexico. Let's apply the preset. 
tropical add a bit more exposure and look at this image it looks fantastic how the greens are tending towards those moody desaturated vibes they're not completely gone but they're a bit more emerald but we're retaining that warmish tone that we have on the skins in the shadows and also that very nice contrast how about in this one a different environment this one is in my home with Emmet. here we have a lot of types of greens let's apply the base preset first yeah something like that a lot more warm a lot more contrasty and now let's apply the tropical one which is very moody it's fantastic actually how it desaturates a lot of the greens and retains that warmish tone into the highlights and also into the shadows very nice image and i think we really nailed down the tropical style how about in this one this one has the base preset let's apply now the tropical one and there's the difference immediately we can see how the greens are more towards the emeralds and also the greens in the background are very desaturated that's what we were looking for this is the tropical preset now let's create another variant on the style maybe if you want a bit more lush and with more vibrant greens let's create the minimal brown style that they have now for that one let's first of all return to the base edit over here and now what we want to do is go all the way down to hsl once again and we're going to do the opposite in saturation we're going to add a bit of saturation into the yellows and into the greens and then in the hue what we want to do is go to the opposites we want to go to the negatives to the warmish side not too much but just add a bit more warmth to it you can play around with these values just slide them around to see what works and now the image is a lot more warm a lot more brownish you can see that the greens are a lot more vibrant so let's save this preset once again this one i'm going to save it as the minimal brown and let's see how it performs on different scenarios first of all let's see with this image of my dog Emmett and immediately we can see how the greens are a lot more vivid a lot more orangey and burnt out how about in this one and when we were climbing another volcano my friend and me let's apply the preset once again the minimal brown just add a bit more exposure and reduce a bit of the contrast because it's a very harsh sunlight environment and there we have those greens tending towards the yellowish tones this is what we were looking for and in a difference to the tropical for example where there's a lot more desaturation this is the tropical with the greens towards the emeralds and desaturated and this is the minimal brown in this one for example this is the tropical and this is the minimal brown a lot more vivid a lot more warmish tones to it last but not least let's create the retro film look that they have in the retro film variant so for that i'm just going to return to the original once again and it's basically the same basis of the edit so i'm not going to move too much what i'm going to do is pull out the blacks pull them up to fade them out immediately we can see that faded look effect and pull down the whites to fade them out into the highlights so they're not too harsh so there we have a very faded look next what we're going to do is add some grain just going to zoom in as you can see this image is very sharp and very green but we can go all the way down to effect and add some grain add some size to it and some roughness to make it a lot more rugged and a lot more like the grain that comes in film looks in film images and then what we're going to do is go to color grain and add that greenish or warmish cast into the entire image and for that we're not going to tamper with the values that we already added in the midtones and in the shadows what we want to do is go to the general color wheel or the global color wheel over here and here we're going to add that green cast for example representing some kodak films like this or if you want a more orangey look just turn it towards the oranges i'm going to go in this case for a greenish cast uh, something like that maybe add a bit more saturation if you want to to create this very stylized look that is mimicking the style from retro or analog cameras i'm going to save this one and see how it performs on different scenarios starting off with this one of my dog emmet now we have all the presets first of all we have the base preset then we have the tropical with that emerald like greens and desaturation then we have that minimal brown a bit more vibrant and uh, yellowish greens and then we have the retro look yeah with the greenish cast to it another image over here a very tropical image uh, let's start off with the base preset very contrasty I'm just gonna add a bit more exposure maybe then we have the minimal brown which adds a lot more yellows into the greens a bit more warmish and brownish tones then the retro look with the greenish cast to it and then finally we have the tropical with those emerald and desaturated greens so how about in this one let's apply the base preset it's looking quite nice now let's see the minimal brown see that change from the greens from the minimal brown to the base preset a bit more warmish a bit more brownish then the retro looks fantastic and then the tropical with those emeralds so guys i think we did quite a nice job in replicating jungle preset style and remember i'm not taking any authority on the style this is just my interpretation on their color creating remember to go and support them if you want their presets go ahead and buy them but having said that i think this tutorial was 
quite a nice example, quite a nice exercise into how to create different variants on the same look. Therefore, you can apply maybe your preset that you normally use in maybe urban scenes to maybe now landscapes, to portraits, maybe now to product photography. Just create little tweaks here and there to create different variants of the preset so you can expand your types of photography and your type of editing. So it was quite a nice example. So guys, remember that these presets, the four presets that we just created, I've already added them to the Edlac preset packs, the desktop and the mobile versions, alongside all the presets that we've created throughout this series, including Peter McKinnon, Alan Palander, Monaris, Pau Clavero, Laura Pardo, more than 40 presets that we've already broken down. So check them out. And also I've added it to the like lot pack. So you can apply these optimized presets into your video as well. So that's a way you can support me. And remember in my shop, you can find my personal presets that I use every single day and my personal lots. That's a way you can support me and ensure I can continue to do this for the foreseeable future and I have something to eat. So I'll be very thankful if you can support me in any manner, guys. If you can't, just give it a like and comment down below, subscribe. I'm Tony Fuentes, that actually helped me out. So I'm gonna leave it just like that. That light has just died. And I think the booster shot is affecting me because I'm a bit tired. So I'm gonna see you in the next one. I'm Tony Fuentes, cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.